This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. Why should a dozen scholars come together in the 21st century to take another look at William Friedkin's 1970 film, The Boys in the Band? After more than four decades, audiences and commentators of various persuasions have already settled on a certain reckoning of its value for cinema, history, and queer politics. It is merely an early and minor effort in the career of a director who went on to create cinematic monuments called The French Connection and The Exorcist, merely a toxic touchstone that evinces a bygone era's homophobia, and merely a fictional group portrait of apolitical gay men gathered comfortably in an Upper East Side apartment, while other people in their time and hours, risk their lives for the queer cause. The conventional understanding of the film may concede its important place in the history of gay male representation, but that understanding also implies an expectation that the film will know its place and dutifully stay there. So well established is the film's reputation that returning to it may therefore seem an inconsequential, indulgent, or even morbid academic exercise. Countering the prevailing impression of familiarity with the boys in the band, this collection of new essays displays how much is to be gained by such a return. As readers of this book will discover, The Boys in the Band merits not only the close study that should accompany such an artfully constructed film, but also recognition as a landmark ideally situated to orient us amid the highly complex, shifting cultural terrain it occupied upon its release, and has occupied since. Using a variety of approaches across a range of academic disciplines, the contributors to this value make long overdue corrections to the ignorance and misunderstanding that have dogged the film. Among the many other insights afforded by the essays here, readers will encounter, in individual chapters or across multiple chapters, strong cases for positioning the boys in the band at the center of its director's body of work, for recognizing its shaping influence on the gay liberation movement, and for regarding its political vision as potentially transformative for our contemporary queer discourse. As these essays show, instead of languishing as an antique outlier in the interdisciplinary field of queer studies, this film has the capacity to catalyze bold, fresh, and exciting new work, both in and beyond queer studies. Returning to The Boys in the Band makes possible intensive examination of what this book's subtitle calls flashpoints. In revisiting this film and its historical and critical contexts, each of this book's contributors has isolated a moment of crisis, contention, or transformation. Such a moment occurs midway through the action of the film itself, when an explosion of homophobic violence instantaneously alters the relationships among the characters and precipitates the unnerving tension that follows through the remainder of the film. Alan assaults Emery verbally and physically, shouting faggot and beating him to the floor. Because of this and other instances of conflict in the story, in fact, it makes sense to read this film as an allegory of social combustion. As the allegorical reading of the film suggests, the flashpoints observed by this book's contributors are not all contained within the content of the film. As many of the following chapters explain in various ways, the formal techniques that convey this content produce an impression of a world on the verge of explosion. Moreover, both the contentious social environment depicted within the film and the cinematic techniques used to present it also express very real conflicts that had taken place before or were taking place during the historical moment of its creation. Not least among these conflicts is the exactly contemporaneous Stonewall riots. The cultural circumstances in which this film was made are also those of the most legendary moment of queer resistance. The specific episode of violence in the film's action may also be said to prefigure moments of cultural and critical crisis that followed it, such as the heated debates about this particular film during the 1970s and the combustible arguments about queer politics and queer thought that are taking place now. What makes the film so interesting to the scholars assembled here is its exceptional combination of elements. No other film combines such an evocative formal design, such a pivotal role in history, and such powerful resonance for our contemporary queer political discourse. Before moving outward to the socio-political significance of the film, though, it will be helpful to begin by offering a brief description of it. The debut of The Boys in the Band was revolutionary. 
above all because of the film's fictional but frank presentation of male homosexual subculture in Manhattan. <laughs> 